The Theory of Political Economy by William Stanley Jevons. Chapter 4 Theory of Exchange. Part 4 Popular Use of the Term Value. In the popular use of the word value, no less than three distinct though connected meanings seem to be confused together. These may be described as 1. Value in use, 2. Esteem or urgency of desire, and 3. Ratio of exchange. Adam Smith, in the familiar passage already referred to, distinguished between the first and the third meanings. He said the word value, it is to be observed, has two different meanings and sometimes expresses the power of purchasing other goods which the possession of that object conveys. The one may be called value in use, the other value in exchange. The things which have the greatest value in the use have frequently little or no value in exchange. And on the contrary, those which have the greatest value in exchange have frequently little or no value in use. Nothing is more useful than water, but it will purchase scarce anything. Scarce anything can be had in exchange for it. A diamond, on the contrary, has scarce any value in use, but a very great quantity of other goods may frequently be had in exchange for it. It is sufficiently plain that when Adam Smith speaks of water as being highly useful, and yet devoid of purchasing power. He means water in abundance, and that is to say water so abundantly supplied that it has exerted its full useful effect or its total utility. Water, when it becomes very scarce, as in a dry desert, acquires exceedingly great purchasing power. Thus Smith evidently means by value and use the total utility of a substance of which the degree of utility has sunk very low because the want of such substance has been well nigh satisfied. By purchasing power, he clearly means the ratio of exchange for other commodities, but here he fails to point out that the quantity of goods received in exchange depends just as much upon the nature of the goods received as on the nature of those given for them. In exchange for a diamond, we can get a great quantity of iron, or corn, or paving stones, or other commodity of which there is abundance. But we can get very few rubies, sapphires, or other precious stones. Silver is of high purchasing power compared with zinc or lead or iron, but of small purchasing power compared with gold, platinum, or iridium. Yet we might well say, in any case, that diamond and silver are things of high value. Thus I am led to think that the word value is often used in reality to mean intensity of desire or esteem for a thing. A silver ornament is a beautiful object apart from all ideas of traffic. It may thus be valued or esteemed simply because it suits the taste and fancy of its owner, and is the only one possessed. Even Robinson Crusoe must have looked upon each of his possessions with varying esteem and desire for more although he was incapable of exchanging with any other person. Now, in this sense, value seems to be identical with the final degree of utility of a commodity, as defined in a previous page. It is measured by the intensity of the pleasure or benefit which would be obtained from a new increment of the same commodity. No doubt there is a close connection between value in this meaning and value as ratio of exchange. Nothing can have a high purchasing power unless it be highly esteemed in itself, but it may be highly esteemed apart from all comparison with other things, and though highly esteemed, it may have a low purchasing power because those things against which it is measured are still more esteemed. Thus I come to the conclusion that, in the use of the word value, three distinct meanings are habitually confused together and require to be thus distinguished. 1. Value in use, which equals total utility, 2. Esteem, which equals final degree of utility, and 3. Purchasing power, which equals ratio of exchange. It is not to be expected that we could profitably discuss such matters as economic doctrines, while the fundamental idea of the subject are thus jumbled up together in one ambiguous word. The only thorough remedy consists in substituting for the dangerous name value that one of the three stated meanings which is intended in each case. In this work, therefore, I shall discontinue the use of the word value altogether, and when, as will be most often the case, 
in the remainder of the book, I need to refer to the third meaning, often called by economists exchange or exchangeable value. I shall substitute the wholly unequivocal expression ratio of exchange, specifying at the same time what are the two articles exchanged. When we speak of the ratio of exchange of pig iron and gold, there can be no possible doubt that we intend to refer to the ratio of the number of units of the one commodity to the number of units of the other commodity for which it exchanges, the units being arbitrary concrete magnitudes, but the ratio an abstract number. When I proposed in the first edition of this book to use ratio of exchange instead of the word value, the expression had been so little, if at all, employed by English economists that it amounted to an innovation. John Stuart Mill, indeed, in his chapters on value, speaks once and again of things exchanging for each other in the ratio of their cost of production, but he always admits to say distinctly that exchange value is itself a matter of ratio. As to Ricardo, Malthus, Adam Smith, and other great English economists, although they usually discourse at some length upon the meaning of the word value, I am not aware that they ever explicitly apply the name ratio to exchange or exchangeable value. Yet ratio is unquestionably the correct scientific term and the only term which is strictly and entirely correct. It is interesting, therefore, to find that although overlooked by English economists, the expression had been used by two or more of the truly scientific French economists, namely Latrose and Condillac. Latrose carefully defines value in the following terms. Value consists in the relation of exchange which exists between such and such a thing, doing such and such a measure of one production and such a measure of others. Condillac apparently adopts the words of Latrose, saying of value, that it consists in the relation of exchange between such and such a thing. Such economical works as those of Bedou, Latrose, and Condillac were almost wholly unknown to English readers until attention was drawn to them by Mr. H. D. MacLeod and Professor Adamson, but I shall endeavour for the future to make proper use of them.